So Jimmy, mate, it's the start of the year, it's January, and, and thinking ahead, what kind of cafe would you actually open this year? Hey, I reckon if I was gonna open a cafe, the kind of cafe that I'd love to open. It's January, this is the first time we've caught up to shoot a video this year and we reckon it'd be great to have a cup of coffee and ask each other what kind of cafe we would open yeah. this year. Jimmy's got his version, I've got mine. We haven't um, discussed any of these at all, but we thought we'd just try and give you guys a bit of insight to what we would do given the considerations of the year, our personal lives and yeah, what's happening and a direction for, for a cafe. Yeah, I'm really curious as to see which direction you'd go, for sure. Yeah. So Jimmy, what is what would you open this year, mate? What kind of cafe? If you walked up to my cafe, you'd be walking up to a takeaway space. I'd, I'd probably make it pretty small. We'd go takeaway window, um, no dining seats, yep. really fast grab and go food, um, lots of beautiful equipment, of course. So. Um, fast coffee is out the door, minimal staff, I'd probably keep it a little bit simpler for myself and yeah, just reduce um, the offering, but just do it high, high volume, really fast coffee um, with a few grab and go things. Um, so seven days a week, still pumping them out from nice and early in the morning yep. and then get those afternoons to go surfing and maintain that lifestyle with the family. So yeah, cool. It's a bit of a snapshot of where I would go. Interesting. Yeah. Where do you reckon you go? What's your... Uh, mate, I think we're on a similar vibe. Yeah. Um, look, obviously, dining's been a real challenge the last couple of years, so yeah. I would be sticking away from dining. That is definitely not it. It would be a small, um, actually a drive-through style container, because I actually look at multiple yeah. angles in a business always. Sure. So um, I've kind of always got an idea where you could have drive through around the back of, say, like a, a double shipping container, and on the front could be served from that kind of vibe you're actually talking. It's a walk up, minimal yeah. menu, but it's the two types of businesses that I'd really want to be looking at. So quick, fast drives throughout the back, yeah. around driving around a container, and then on the front would be, it'd only have like two or three tables with just a little cool vibe where you could just sit for a moment, um, you know, with a laptop, have a quick coffee if you needed that moment. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't be by beachside, it'd definitely be on a corner with high volume where cars can come sure. in and out, but just creating a little bit of an atmosphere, just to have that little stop moment in a cool vibe. Yeah, I think mine's the same in that I'd love that beach side, but I think we know where the, where the traffic is and you've, if you want to, you'd have to compromise a little bit there on, on that vibe, but I think we want to be where the people are and where the volume is for sure. Yeah, I'd definitely be focusing on the Monday to Friday traffic, uh, 5.30 start, done by 12 o'clock and really sticking back to the five day a week. Just to, as, as you said, yeah, five day a week. I don't go surfing as much as you, but sure. doing stuff in the Arvos and yeah. freeing up the weekends. Um, I've got a bit of a model here that I reckon can, can show how that could work and have a pretty okay. good lifestyle right. for a pretty tight, tight unit. All right. So for you, how many staff would you need? Three. Three. Three, Three staff. Yep. Including yourself? Yep. You gonna rope the wife in? No. <laughs> <laughs> been there. Uh, look, we, we, we've had cafes before. Um, yep. It'd definitely be a full-time kind of staff member um, yep. and myself being, being full-time in it um, and then another part-timer. Sure. And I reckon the three of us, we'd be able to yeah, pump out heaps of volume and keeping it those, those like shorter hours, like that mm. five to 12, it's, it's a one full shift kind of thing. Sure. So it means there's not, you know, staff yeah. changeovers, don't have to have more people yeah. and, and really making sure you've got the key people to help you there. I think it's, I think I've got a similar concept. I just always in my mind, I want to make sure that it's, it's not a six hour work day. It's still going to be a, a 10 hour work day, but you've got four hours of prep, business development, you can actually work on the business when you're closed yep. and be ready for the next day. I think there's always this preconception that if you open from six to 12, you've absolutely only work those hours. But I think there's a sure. lot of, in my mind, I would kind of set it up so that when you're busy, you're busy and you do a really good job within that time and you, you're just consistent every single day so the customers know when you're gonna be open. They know they can get a coffee first thing in the morning, drive through even better. Yep. Um, but yeah, definitely allowing a little bit more time in my day for um, working on the business. Sure. It's always a missed opportunity and a lot of people kind of underestimate when they pick their opening hours, I know. I can just see that lost time or you know, you end up doing jobs while you're trying to trade and it just 
it's hard. So yeah. I think it's definitely focusing on the customers and smashing them out when, when you get the opportunity, for sure. Yeah, I've always found with conversations with people that uh, about 80% of the coffee is drunk before 11.30. Mm. So I find, you know, focus on that, free up the time to, yep. yeah, if you can get the business model, finish early. Yeah. Maybe not lunch, just brekkie. Just smash out of brekkie. Yeah, for yep. sure. What kind of food do you reckon you'd have? Um, I haven't got anything revolutionary. I've been thinking about, like, I guess, there's, there's so many good things. Like the bakery treats, there's so many things that people just love. And you can't, you, you can try to get away from them. But... I mean, Jesus, eight bucks for a croissant these days. So you, yeah. you know, like, there's a lot of things that you can make um, quick and easy. And, and But I, again, I would probably allow that time in the afternoons or first thing in the morning to prep myself. Yep. I think is I think I'd want to, you can get the better margins out of things that you can make yourself. Obviously, when I'm doing the build, I'd have to think about whether I can cook on site. Yep. Or we'll go into food in a minute, but I guess just, I would say I'd want to be able to prepare some food on site because I can is this looking like a sweet kind of grab and go stuff or would you go like real healthy real healthy real healthy yeah, yeah. I think I think it would be like that's why I'd probably have to get up nice and early and make some fresh food yep yeah and I'd want to bring in less stuff and definitely produce my own things and, and have a lot of fresh grab and go things cool. so that would be my it, healthy would be a great great space for sure yeah, yeah right how about you a uh, bit of classics, I reckon, because I think they're still yeah. hanging around. They're still quick and easy to produce. Definitely bacon egg roll, brekkie wrap, yeah. um, some sort of like music quinoa bowl, something really quick and easy that's prepped up, yeah. ready to go. Um, and then, yeah, the, the muffins. Like you can't go past an awesome big muffin, probably a yeah. really sweet one and a healthy one. Yeah. Every day you can make in a little kind of little oven. Um, and biscuits. Yeah, sure. I mean, I can't not have biscuits in my business with uh, my <laughs> yeah. wife's. Um, I yeah. mean, in your experience, do you feel like making these things yourself versus bringing them in? What's, which one tips the scale more? Make it yourself. Like we, in our, our previous business, we used to pump out like dozens and dozens of muff muffins. Mm. And you can actually get a really awesome mix and freeze it down if you need to. Yeah. So you can prep that up and be able to work really well for us. Yeah, I think it's, it's hard for people to, to imagine how much work that can be on top of a day's work, for yep. sure. Um, but I think it's super valuable. I think it's better product at the end of the day too. Yeah, we found we were able to do uh, multiple batches throughout the day of cooking muffins, like mm. 12 at a time or whatever. Um, Which is where that extra staff member behind the scenes could really come in handy. Yeah. I, I would say like, even though you might have, a, mine would be a small takeaway menu, you've got two baristas at least, someone serving, there's three on the front, but then there might always, there's always gotta be someone behind the scenes keeping the ball rolling on, um, yeah, stopping the fridge, prepping throughout the day. So I'd say probably need four. Okay. So what size, like physical size, are you talking for your shop? Because this is the thing about staffing. If we, we just sort of said small, but too yeah. many people make it pretty pretty tight. So how, how big do you reckon? Oh, I think it, I think from a shop front, front point of view, it's not a walk in the room kind of thing. Yep. It's it's just a, a onto the onto the main road or somewhere where you can pull up, good parking. Um, but the the space inside is probably more of a usable space that you can cook in and actually utilize yeah cool so i think i think the inside of the shop would need to be um, a little bit bigger because once you start filling out cafes with fridges benches cooking like you need a much bigger space than people originally intend yeah right. for sure and, and i i can see that as you think about the food you start to build your menu um it's good to think about the menu early because you you really do need to think about whether you're going to need a grease trap, whether you're going to need to cook, whether you're going to like it, how much room you're actually going to need. It's all well and good to stay fresh and healthy, but if I don't have the fridges and the space. And you've got to get deliveries every single day, you've got to prep yeah. time beforehand, yeah. you've got to have space, you've got to prep all that as well, then yeah. you've just fridge space. Yeah, you've got to bigger and bigger figure, yeah. and then you end up with a cafe. Yeah. So, yeah, trying to, trying to bring it back. I think, I think the main goal of the business would be fast, simple, healthy food. Yeah, great. And, and quality coffee. Speaking of which, you got a fancy machine on your bench? I do have a fancy machine. The setup, um, probably maybe talk about my size a bit more. So it's literally gonna be a 20 foot shipping container at, at yeah. the back end and a yeah. 20 foot at the front. Um, you'd have an awning that would come out so people could walk up. And because it's a bit of a loop road going around the back for the drive through, that, that front is a bit more protected with weather because the, the, the panel, sure. front panel lift up. 
So I would only have six meters to, to work with, with the 20 foot container. So the far first part of the corner would be ordering and the other end would be um, pick up. So in between yep. that space, um, I've got about four meters of, of space to have grinders, coffee machines, um, yep. automated milk, definitely, no yep. doubt. All the fridges, everything under hot there as well. Automated milk. I'd love hot. Same. Hot automated is, is, is definitely the way to go. Are you sad that you won't be spinning your own milk? Um, you're still going to spin some milk, right, <laughs> for true. sure. That's true. But look, from someone that's been behind a machine for years, as you know, yeah. it, it really just takes a toll on your body. It does. Um, and if you want to get consistency, speed, and, and mm. put anyone into a situation that they can just learn how to make coffee really quick mm. and get a good consistent product, and that's what your customers want. Sure. Um, having automation and being able to train that quickly is, is definitely the way to yeah. go. Yeah. Going back to staff, I think that they come hand in hand when you're talking about hiring and how fast you can do it and some can someone walk straight into yep. you know five kilos in two hours? Like can they can they jump in and help? Yeah. Those automa that automation is really gonna help. It'd be a Lama Zocco Swift. You got two oh, bands, yeah. definitely chuck it in, away you go. Yeah. Look, I know they're not perfect, but um, it, it's just seamless. It's sure. really, you can, we know we can do things to make it a really tasty cup, yep. a bit of an overdose. <coughs> It'd be a three group KB90. Same. <laughs> <laughs> just, nice. Yeah. It, uh, just like, click. That's it. I know. Straight auto auto birds. Yeah. Like just RSI, like I know from, yep. from the times of making coffee, my risk for killing me. Yep. Like, oh, you know, once you start doing some serious volume, you know, once you're doing 10 kilos a day, yep. You get very sore. Yeah, shout out to Lama Zocco. I mean, yeah. they've been working on that for years as a technology. Um, it's interesting, yeah, we've, we've been there. We've been doing the handles, all different machines for years. Mm. And it does, it kills you, it really does hurt. Um, but to have a machine now that's accessible, um, it's not at a good price point. Let's let's be real, it's a big investment. Yeah, it's definitely, well, we're investing in this. That's where my yeah. money would be coming, is, yeah. is on automation and copy equipment for sure. Our team would actually love us, mate, because we're, we're they're starting at the peak. Oh yeah, like if you, and that's why I think you'd attract, I know that I could attract some serious producers with that equipment. Yep. It's always, that's the, that's an easy way to, to you know, <laughs> a good barista will come up and get a coffee and they'll say that machine, like, oh, yep. I'd like to work on that. So you can definitely attract um, good baristas with good equipment. Yep. Yeah. Would you, would you customize that gear? Uh, yeah, I would, like red wouldn't be the color that I would choose naturally. Yep. Um, I think from a look and a feel of the cafe, it would, because it's healthy and it's clean, I think I think any cafe needs to look and present well. Yep. I mean, nice and maybe a little bit minimal, um, but, but also have some vibe about it. I think you don't want to strip it out so much that it's cold. Yep. Um, Bring a little bit, a bit of color in it, a bit of, bit of fun. Yeah, I mean, you're a designer, graphic designer in the back end. So, what, what's the color, mate? What, what color do you reckon you'd have? Oh, mate. Is, is it white with a splash? Oh, what, what's blue, this? Yeah. <laughs> <Disney> blue. <laughs> oh, cool. that's really. Um, right now, it's sage. Right now, it's like it's yeah. um, it's softer colors. It's just you know, it's the camels. It's yeah. Yeah, um, it's organic without being organic in a way. I think I think you can bring some life into it a little bit more. But yeah, definitely some some subtle colours and some tasteful, tasteful soft um, greens and stuff like that in there. Yep. Um, yeah. Be nice. Cool. How about you? Pretty similar. Um, I definitely texture. Texture for me, I like these kind of VJ style walls. Um, probably some light, still whitewashed timber. I think is still pretty yep. fresh and clean. Um, probably in a parquetry v-shaped style across the main front front part when people walk up looks yeah. kind of cool um color scheme I, yeah it'd be something like this i do love this this camel color um i think green for me it was a bit last year but i'd probably bring green in with a couple of nice plants and yeah. um yeah just a maybe a bit of a one splash wall that just says who we are what we do cool. so that, that it links i love that shirt by the way how do i get one how do you get one well <laughs> this shirt is made by jimmy you can jump online, grab this shirt, comes with a cool sticker. Um, plug. <laughs> plug. <laughs> and uh, well, yeah, it's it's definitely the art of espresso, mate. Yeah. It's, a, it's a journey that the business has been on. Yeah. And, um, I would say like from a gra being graphic designer, I'd go hard on branding. I'd be like, you know, logo that could be translated to cups, takeaway cups, I'd probably go hard on, on the visual concept. I think there's, we know the big brands that do it and we're not that impressed by them, but it's always nice to have, you know, consistency from 
the wrapping to the cup to the yep. to the visual of it. I mean, translate that back to social media. Um, to be honest, I'd probably the hire Ryan, <laughs> <laughs> and he can run all my socials behind the scenes. I think that you, that's where your team would grow. Yep. Also, like um, is is that brand and that kind of big concept of of yeah what people are seeing in all areas of the business for sure. All right, there's a, there's a question that's coming out to me right now and it's something that you and I probably have different perspective on because we're in it and we're, we're attached to a coffee brand mm. but if you're starting a shop how would you how would you balance your own brand versus the coffee you use because sure. we kind of t- we tailor our brand back a bit we pair it back so we aren't yeah. the forefront some people have really pushed our brand out there and become it yeah but what do you reckon what do you think you'd do would you you just said packaging and branding across the whole lot would that be Jimmy's cafe and be Jimmy's coffee or do you think you'd still have the two so that they can be their own individual brands shining you, there's so much value in, in representing the coffee that you use um, you wouldn't pair it away from your own coffee I, I don't think going only your own, own brand is the answer yep um, the coffee that you choose you go with artistic and you and you you do attach yourself to a brand that already is established, yep. already has a reputation. Someone comes up and orders a coffee, they get a cup, the cup travels with them, they tell the next person they see how good this coffee is, they know it's an artistic cup, and they're not gonna say, oh, that's, I don't know where that's from. Yep. But they're gonna, they're gonna learn pretty quickly that that's theirs and that's theirs. And, and I mean, there's always opportunities for co-branding, there's always, um, but I, I definitely think that um, very much in the early stages, for sure, you want to be attaching yourself to brands that are already doing good things. Yep. Um, customers know them, especially locally. If it's a local company and, and they already have a good reputation, um, it's been really valuable in the, in the cafes that we look after. They've definitely taken on some of our branding and they look in their feel, you know, done their own renovations and fit outs and used the white concepts and brought us in. Yep. Um, but that, yeah, that it really pairs well with our, our branding. I think that's um, really beneficial to them. That's what I do. Yeah, I think the ones that do it well concentrate on brand as, as their cafe's brand mm. and they still market that really well. And then our brand attaches well with the coffee. Yeah. If they don't, if you don't, if you're not thinking, if you're thinking the coffee is going to be the hero for everything, I think that's a worry. I think it's got yeah. to be complimenting you as well. So yeah. I'd be making sure I've got that, that double brand moving it out. Yeah. Making sure, yeah, the look and the feel, the yeah. uniforms are, yeah. On yeah, I think, it's, I think it's part of that looking well presented, being consistent, um, knowing what your purpose is and what you, you know, what the vision for the space is and bringing people in on that. Yep. So that's important. Cool. Coffee volume I've got here. <laughs> hundred kilos a week. Hundred kilos. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. I think, <clears throat> I think in those opening mm. hours, like if you were trading six to 10, yep. you could do five, six kilos in that time. Yep. You do that five days a week, there's 30 kilos, you do that seven days, you go out to 12. It's it's high volume, like it's a lot of coffees. Yep. But it's definitely achievable. Okay. I would aim for 40 to 50, I think financially, to, <laughs> to pay for all of my fancy equipment, <laughs> yeah. and to justify the fancy equipment and everything I'd want to do there. You you're like you really want to get to that volume, um, and to make that easy, uh, like we're talking, if I'm getting forty to fifty cups a kilo, and I'm doing um, fifty kilos a week, that's two and a half thousand cups of coffee. As a guide, I think that's helpful. And other people kind of go, "How much is fifty kilos of coffee?" If I'm getting fifty cups per kilo, yep, that's that's the quick maths for sure. Okay, I'm pretty similar actually. I, I maxed at forty. Um, and getting to that and being consistent around that volume. Yeah. Because um, I think when you hit past that, you're going to have things break. Um, yeah. And in, in that setup I've got, um, I'd have to then look at another machine or more people to get the volume. Yeah. I think the car traffic would be would be far more. So definitely pre-ordering, pre-app sure. you know, or, or whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, sometimes that can be good and otherwise it can be a pain in the butt with the drive-through because you've got a person that's already ordered and they're still stuck yeah. in the queue trying to get through. Yeah. So sometimes that can be a negative. So it might only be pre-order for pickup. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 40 kilos <clears throat> a week for me. Um, and again, same maths. I said 2,000 cups a week. 
Yeah. Went a little bit further just to be able to work that out in money, um, just to share that, but that would be um, just in coffee sales alone, 468,000 odd dollars at four bucks 50 a cup um, or nine grand a week in that short amount of time. So sure. if you, yeah, if you break it up real quick, um, 30% wage cost, that's 140 grand. Uh, 30% expenses, 30% cost of goods, 10% profit, another 46K. Um, yeah. That's 186 grand worth of, of money to people. Um, that'd be about 96 grand to the owner, 60 grand for a full-timer and 30 for a part-timer. Great. And then- cool. I did not do my math. No. <laughs> that was good. Um, and then on top of that, obviously, is the food, the extras, the, you know, I'd have a little bit of retail as well. So um, again, keeping it simple, keeping it tight, rewarding those people that will help you build the brand and, and do a great job. I think it's, the food is an, is an opportunity. Yeah. I think I love coffee and I wanted, that would be my focus and that's what I'd want to do so well. But the opportunity, especially if you can make it yourself, give you a bit more margin in food, you're growing a brand and you can add that extra little bit of percentage because you know, you've, you've got that room. I think the food is, is there to, to boost that income for sure. I think it's, it would, I don't think I'd make enough money if I was just relying on coffee. Yep. Uh, the little snacks, yes, the cookies, little bits here and there, but I think the food is the thing that takes any any place to that next opportunity of earning for sure. Yep. Uh, there is work in it, there is more staff and more expenses, but I think that extra profit opportunity is what would really um, bring it home for sure. Thinking on equipment, food-wise, the one piece that um, you see me in, some of those sandwich shops where you can open up your sandwich, fill them and toast them real quick. Yeah. Is it a Merry Chef? Oh. It's a microwave and a cooker in one. I know one of our customers have yeah, one of yeah. those. Yeah, I think I would have to have a Merry Chef because you could do bacon in it, you can toast oh, so something quick. real quick. Yeah. They are, they'd be the, the key you I reckon. Would, again, another, another investment in equipment, <clears throat> well worth it. Um, the speed on toasties is what kills people. The sandwich press toasties. The toasty. sandwich press toasties, yeah. just like, it just doesn't, it's not fast enough. No. You got to microwave them first to get them hot through, which makes the bread soggy and you still have to toast it for a certain amount of time. Uh, I think that's a, it's not in alignment. I think when you make a choice that I'm going to be quick, yep. you have to purchase the things that are going to back, going to back you up on that. Sure. For sure. So right. how many, how many alternative milks would you offer Jimmy? I know this is getting a bit of a crazy mark. Yeah. What do you reckon uh, you'd have to have in 20, this year moving forward? Sure. What's what's hot? All right. So right now, right now we're moving a lot of oat milk, and I I go oat, almond, then soy. Um, I think to entertain because of my the market that I'm also hitting too with the healthy options, you'd have to bring in some of the other ones. Like the new hemp milk is actually quite good. Yep. Um, and doing the volume you're doing, the concern of having so many milks is slowing you down. Yep. So that's more of a workflow thing and, and managing. Like if you've got a heated milk system for your full cream and, and your skim, potentially some of those will soon be able to do like a bladder of almond milk. Um, if, you're, if you're doing that, it's not that hard to be spinning milk for the soys. Yeah, sure. So I think you could have that bigger offering. I think it's valuable for customers to have those options, um, but you just have to read the market. If you aren't using up a bottle of coconut milk before it goes off, yep, take off the menu. Yeah, I mean coconut's dead. Yeah, I mean it's good in the smoothies, things like that. Yeah, um, actually, I made and mate, there no smoothies, no frappes. That for is sure. not my. Uh, I made an, well, I would just do all pre-prepped. Yeah. So I, I recently went somewhere. Um, the fridge was full of. Uh, juices had coconut water, apple, baby spinach, but nothing was blended. Yeah, right. So the cup was full of all of the ingredients. The fridge was full, and I, like you might know who this some big supplier is, but it was just a great new concept. I ordered it, I took it off, took it off in the blender. Twenty seconds later, lid was back on. Oh, it was out the door. That's good. Yeah, you know, like if you can think about the innovation on on those fast things. Yep. Um, if you're if you were going to do a smoothie, you'd want to have like pre-bagged banana, nutmeg, like protein powder, everything in a bag, straight in a blender. Yep. Um, it like, you'd almost have another milk system, cold milk system just for that system. But again, it's just like the coffee area. Don't, you can't- Can't be everything there. Can't do everything coffee and then, and then have, yeah, because you'd also need to man it. Yeah, okay. It's another staff member on cold drinks. 
Yeah, it's an area that I know always slows everything way down and people expand that out really far and then they try and come back to the juice of the day. My coffee, my barista's are not leaving that machine. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So it's another staff member. Again, you'd want to justify the expense of that staff member by selling a lot of smoothies. Yeah. But, um, but it, it would be hard to not do them with the kind of clientele that I'd be attracting. All right. So I've got to think about what they're coming for. They're yep. coming for breakfast. Am I, am I missing, am I not actually giving them what they're coming for? Yeah, maybe they're not getting a coffee today. They always get a coffee, yep. but they'll also get breakfast and a bacon egg roll. Cool. Yeah, if I can increase my cart purchase to, from that $5 coffee to a $15 order, yep. um, that's the goal. All right. Sure. Uh, you say that because every order value AOV is something you've really got to look at and people yeah. forget about that. Just getting one extra thing in people's hands when you're buying. Yep. Um, you know, I did my maths here on a $4.50 coffee. Now, mm. that's not realistic, I don't think, this year. I think it's going to have to be the six bucks for a basic coffee now, mm. um, just with costs going up. So, yep. um, you know, that all that does is push your sales up, but everything else is relevant. The same costs, all Definitely. of those things, that's the price yeah. going up. So I'd be aiming for about a $12 average yep. out of a customer. Yep. Do you reckon you'd pull more than that out of someone? I'd be wanting more than that. Yeah, yep. I think um, we're selling more of the 12 ounce cups anyway. Yep. We'd probably go, 50% 12 ounce, 25 in the eight ounce and 25 in the 16 ounce. Again, you're tapping into that morning market where tradies, yep. there's a kilo of trading, kilo of coffee just for tradies before 6 a.m. Yep. 16 ounce cup, triple shot. You know, there's, you've got to, you yeah, especially in that takeaway. For sure. Like as much as it, as a specialty coffee guy, you know, I cringe a little bit. Yep. But the, the, the market's there for it, so. So interesting on that. Mm. I would you go a six ounce cup? Uh, no, I don't like the flavour of them. Okay, so I actually went six, eight, twelve. Yeah. And I know that's really contradictory because um, it is the tradie coffee, the big one. Yeah. But um, I feel the time that it takes and the extra shots it takes oh, sure. slows everything down. So I'd be really trying to educate everyone back to the twelve ounce. Yeah. And just really pumping it. Um, I don't think that's yeah. It's just not what I'd, I'd want to do. I think yeah. efficiencies. I'd make it price pointed so it's quicker. And, and yeah. just try and push back into that. Um, yeah, look, I love the tradies, there's no doubt with the drive-through, mm. but I just think that the time that it takes slows it down and, and we could really yeah. educate people on that. Yeah, no, I agree, for sure. I just love a good double espresso in an eight ounce. Yeah. yeah. That's my thing. What about beans? How many offerings would you have? Probably more than I should. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I, I couldn't help but want to have a single origin. I'd want to have... Yeah. I'd, I'd also have them because I'd want to have a batchy. Yep. Like I'd have a batchy sitting on the bench. If someone comes up to me and orders and they want a black coffee but they don't want to wait in line, I'd just pour the cup and hand it to them out the door. Yep. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd not use my other stuff for that. They're not getting an order. So being able to pour a batchy straight away, I'd probably actually, if I had all the money in the world, bring in some taps. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So like have a tap system where I could have a single origin batch brew, um, like a filter coffee on tap. I'd have a cold coffee on tap. A tap system would be great. I mean, there is the opportunity to do self-serve as well on those. I can sell them a cup and then just come up and choose their own single. Um, so I definitely want to give myself the credibility of being a specialty coffee shop. Set yourself apart from the other um, techno shops for sure. Yeah, awesome. Those tap systems are pretty cool and mm. definitely a bit more pre-prep, but in terms pre -prep, of service you and need pump, the volume too. You got to get. Yeah. You're not gonna. Yeah. You want to move, you want to turn them over. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, so? Uh, so, because I've got the Swift, I'd have <clears throat> main, blend, main blend, nothing too dark, just sort of a medium roast like our champion. I'd have decaf, and then I would have a black offering and a cold brew. Yeah. The cold brew would be a pre-bottled product that I'd just be able to hand over so. and give out way over the counter, but it'd be our own product that I'd bottle. Yeah. 100%, yeah, just so that we could um, keep that going through through there, maybe look at um, canning, trying to get some nitrogen can cans, yeah. uh, nitro cold brew or cold brew, and, and have that as an option. Sure. Um, you know, it's good to be able to get 10 cents back if you can take it away that way, and it's not just a cup that's getting thrown in the bin. Um, I feel that's probably a better option. Um, yeah, I think yeah. we have to think about that sustainability this year. Yeah. It's definitely um, a hot topic, it always has been, always will be, but it's just been, uh, more obvious in Australia at the moment, there's a lot of laws changing around t packaging, yep. 
forks and spoons are gone, like plastic forks and spoons. Coffee cups aren't quite there yet, and we've already moved to a PLA, polylactic acid lining takeaway cup for yeah. our own customers, biodegradable lid. Um, and that's that's something, you know, it's a cost that we, we take on because we see the value in, in that long term. It's, so it's interesting, Jimmy, when you talk about um, cups, takeaway cups and, and packaging being um, definitely the move, that's for sure, 2025, 20, it's all got to be recyclable or compostable. I think it's the year to bring back the reusable keep cup bio, you know, replacement kind of cup swap scheme. Um, yep. We lost it over the last couple of years for, for obvious reasons, but I think that's a great way to bring it back. Um, the customer maybe save a little bit of money, uh, offering some sort of discount for that and make yep. sure it's turning up clean because that's the killer with those cups. Yeah, that's when my branding is going to come back in. I can sell them a cup with the branding on it or your coffee supplier can you can get it from them. Yep. It reminds them where they get their good coffee every day. Yep. And um, yeah, I, I think you can bring it back for sure. It's gonna, it's gonna help uh, with your own labour as well and costs. Would you go cup swap system? Because I know there's a few of them out there, and I've found that everyone never seems to have the right cup for the system you have, because there are a few of them. Mm. Or would you just do a general cup swap across the whole board? I, I haven't found, I haven't seen one that works for us regionally as well. That's, I'd say in, if you're in a major city, it might be a slightly different story. There might be a more consistent cup swap system that people are using, but yep. I, I don't know if there is one that's perfect regionally and, and that everyone's using enough to, to do it, but it's can't be that hard yep. to introduce. So if you can add, add that in, you should. All right. Didn't quite go into it enough at retail and merch. Oh yeah. Definitely. Shirts, yeah. hats, merch for the brand, get people wearing it for sure. Yeah. Retail bags of coffee to take home, some drip bags. Mm. That would all be up there and maybe some quick little brewing devices, maybe an aeropress yeah, or something. Same. That's definitely something I'd have. Yeah, it's a good opportunity. They, they will still come back and get a coffee. I think people will get a little bit worried that if you sell them coffee for home, they're not going to come back and get a coffee. Yeah. I don't think that concept works. I think they only fall in love with your coffee more. Um, and then, yeah, they're repping the shirt. They, they, it's funny how our customers get that attachment to cafes. So I think um, it's definitely something you could do in the branding for sure. Yeah, awesome. Well guys, I hope that's helped you understand what kind of cafe Jimmy would open this year and, yeah. and what I would um, open. Similar alignments, interesting. Um, yeah, not sit down, not dine in, not huge labor. And uh, Maybe in a few years time, I'd like to do that <laughs> when I've got a few more hours up my sleeve and, yep. and I could really, entertain that in a specialty coffee guy in me and have a crazy range of coffee but right now yeah in this time it's keeping it simple yeah this year yeah for sure so if you're looking at opening a cafe and some of this stuff has helped you you know get the brain going and uh want a bit of extra info mate if you're in australia we'd love to help you we do help people open cafes or if you actually have an existing cafe and you've got some challenges, what we're really good at, Jimmy, is, is putting systems that we yeah. have, um, not just coffee, some other things as well, into your business to help you grow and, and do a better job. So reach out to us, contact Jimmy on the website. Yeah, head to rtc.com.au, go to the wholesale page and, and get in touch with us there. It's definitely something that we can help at any stage of the business. And um, yeah, bring your dreams to life, really. Yeah, if yeah. your dream is one of our dreams, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'd love to help you with it. That'd yeah, be awesome. For sure. Yeah. Oh, Jimmy, exciting year ahead. Look yeah. forward to it. It's been, it was a big year last year for us. Um, mm. Thanks again for everyone supporting YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah, if you're new. If you're new, subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video, hit the like button and the bell icon. You get notified. We're doing heaps more content this year, so yeah. keep an eye out. Share and it with a friend. Share it with a friend. That's it. Cheers, guys. Thanks, thanks very much. Sir. Thanks for watching.